Well, I've always wanted to travel since I was a kid. I hitchhiked around Australia between school and university and then around Europe shortly afterwards and I wanted to make a living doing it. So I became a journalist. I then became a TV presenter for the Travel Channel and I write for magazines and newspapers. And in 2011, I came to Romania and fell in love with the country. So I've been making films here pretty much ever since. I think because Romania has got the last unspoilt wilderness, you know, left in Europe, the Carpathians, the largest share of the Carpathians. So having made Wild Carpathia 1, 2 and 3, it seemed like the logical thing to do to promote the Carpathians in the wintertime because we've seen it in the summer and all the obvious times for tourists to come. But we haven't seen it in the wintertime and we haven't seen the, the transition between autumn through to spring. And I thought that would be fascinating visually and also all the different landscapes and culture and traditions that go with that. I think the most impressive thing for me uh, has just happened, which is finishing the film. After three attempts to do an interview with Alex Gavan, the climber, and we went to the top of several mountains, once in the snow and it rained, and now yesterday when we went to the top of Fagarash and the clouds came in and uh, once again we carried a whole load of camera kit up there, tripods, everything, and uh, it drizzled and we couldn't film. So here we are today and this is where we staged the interview and we finished the program and it's done. And for me that's the most impressive thing, <laughs> by a long way. Yeah, very much so. I'm <laughs> emotionally, <laughs> physically, <laughs> and uh, in every other way exhausted. I'm happy, but it's been one of the most challenging things I've ever done. It's put huge pressure on me and all the people I love and those around me, and we've worked tirelessly for 12 months. It was supposed to be about uh, seven or eight weeks in total, but we've worked right through since we started filming in September, and it's now August, so yes. And it's going to be very sad to say goodbye to it, actually, once we finish the edit. There's going to be a big hole in my life that I'll have to fill with something else. But uh, I am hugely grateful and very, very relieved that we've now finished filming. So yes, there's a different me. There's a before Charlie and an after Charlie. I haven't met the after Charlie yet, but I'm looking forward to meeting him. <laughs> I think he's going to be a lot less stressful and, and um, a, a, a lot less worried about things than, than the during Charlie. I just don't know what to pick, really, because we've seen so much, and some of them have been really fascinating, and some have been very shocking. The slaughter of the pig, for example, before Christmas, was quite shocking, but I understand it, and uh, obviously it's, it's not wasted. It's, it's, it's a much um, more, I suppose, frugal tradition than the waste we see in fast food shops. Uh, you know, people are using every part of the pig. Uh, I just felt very sorry for it, but, you know, this is nature and this is life. And um, these animals in these areas have a good life and they're kind of free range. And that's one of the beauties of the Carpathians, is the, the old farming techniques that preserve the organic nature of the food and also that the animals, the livestock, aren't kept in huge sheds. Um, owned by big companies and injected with antibiotics. I have tried many different things, that, uh, some of which I've tried before. Uh, you know, it's winter a lot of the time in the film, so you know, we've eaten a lot of chorbas, we've eaten a lot of polenta and cheese. Uh, some of that cheese has, you know, been quite um, pungent, shall we say. <laughs> but uh, I've really enjoyed all the things I've, I've had. Uh, you know, samales I like very much. Uh, things to keep you warm. And then the salads that we, we, we've been having in the spring and the fruit that you get on the sides of the road, the melons, I mean, God, there's so much uh, produce here in this country that, that, that should be eaten here. And, and, and people shouldn't be, you know, eating kind of imported food from all over the world when they have so many beautiful things in Romania. That's what I like to see. I like to see more people actually, you know, eating and celebrating the fruit and veg and the, 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 the wonderful produce that you have in this country. 
Well, we've had huge challenges all the way through. It's been the most difficult project in my life uh, in terms of filmmaking. The, the biggest challenge was the weather and having no winter this year, pretty much no winter, meant that we couldn't film all the beautiful shots that we wanted in the Maramuraj of the sleighs at Christmas time. And we went in different places around the country trying to chase the snow. And this became increasingly ridiculous as we flew back time and time again to get these beautiful locations. And each time we arrived and it would start raining, not snowing. So the weather made it very difficult. And also the problem with the weather making it difficult is it became very expensive. So then our budget went th through the roof. And uh, it's only thanks to to Carrefour um, and, and the people of Romania who've helped us that we've actually got here to the finish line and uh, we've completed the film. Which corners? The world is round, for a start. <laughs> but I, uh, therefore I want it to, um, to go full circle, of course. 360 degrees. I would like the film to be played in every country and I'm gonna do the best I can to make sure that it's seen by everybody. We're going to be taking it to uh, foreign networks after we've screened it first in Romania because the people of Romania have helped pay for this and contributed towards it. So it's really for them first. And then after that, we take it to the world and we try to show as many people as possible. We put it online, we put it with channels and uh, we, we want to get the widest reach we possibly can. It's very simple, protect the forest, protect the wilderness here, the natural heritage of Romania, and protect its cultural historical heritage, its villages, its, its castles, its, its history. And if you bring tourism into these villages and, and give people a source of income that doesn't involve cutting down trees, you can actually create a sustainable revenue stream for the future, for, for, for forever. And this is what we're trying to do. Tourism could become the big earner for Romania and uh, if we can protect its natural and cultural heritage, then, then that's going to be the future, I think. And, and the two, the forests and the villages, are inextricably intertwined. <laughs>